Welcome, welcome, welcome to your 15th day in the 30-day sunrise yoga challenge for beginners. This is the top of the mountain, and today and tomorrow are the moments where we're going to split the top of the mountain, and then we'll start moving down the mountain. When I climb, when I climbed uh, Fuji, Fuji Son, Mount Fuji, you thought the harder part was the climb up. It took longer. You're climbing. You're moving up. You thought, oh. The way down is going to be easier, but in fact, the way down took a lot more patience because you knew where you were going. You knew you could get there fast, but if you go too fast, you'll hurt yourself. And as we are integrating more poses, taking more opportunities in our little yoga snacks and our morning yoga snacks to um, flow more, I want you to remember that. It's always about where your practice is, not where mine is. And I'm going to try my best to make sure to do um, poses at the three different levels. I'm just going to call them um, simple, intermediate, and next today. Um, because I just hate the idea of one thing being more difficult because it's not about difficulty or being closer to the full realization of the pose. The full realization of all poses is Shavasana. So, um, so you can't ever be there. Um, but be where you are. And I'm going to demonstrate at different levels throughout our, the rest of our time. So. Today we're doing half yang, half yin to celebrate halfway because 15 is halfway. It's the first half of the halfway and then 16 splits. And that's the second half of the halfway moment on our way to 30 days. But for 15 days, you have shown up. You have learned a lot. And now let's play. Yes. We're going to only work with poses that we've already learned, and um, it should feel comfortable, smooth, and easy. Let's start with what we definitely know, which is the five Tibetan rituals. Journal, don't forget. Or the other way around, journal, please remember, right? It's easier to do the positive of something than to not do the negative. <laughs> so let me check my radius. Yes, it's good. Two feet on the ground, chin is parallel to the ground, eyes, gaze is on the ground, fingers uh, root into the shoulders, the shoulders root into the shoulder cuffs, and through that rooting, the fingers stretch out, 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 till you get to where your shoulders are flat, your wings are open, and you, your shoulders are not scrunching up. Yes, and the fingers are stretching out. Let's begin. Gaze on the ground. Tapping. One. Two. Three. You're pivoting on that right foot, moving counterclockwise. Four. Five. Bring it all together. Let the spin catch you. Eyes closed. Hmm. let's try to move the breath towards the belly as we get warmer i'm not there yet so maybe you're not there yet either let's go to camel shoulders down fingers um pointing towards the ground our focus and intention on grounding is in our top of our feet our knee and our shins let's begin inhale Three, four, five, notice that I'm always inhaling when my body opens and I exhale when my body closes. 
J. Okay. And let's, I'm going to show a modified version today. So I'm going to show J if I was at, let's say, beginner. So I'm going to have my legs straight. I'm not going to go as far. So I'm going to inhale halfway. Three, four, five. Tabletop. For this tabletop, I will demonstrate it in the intermediate, which means my gaze is not going to go all the way back. It's going to go to the sky. I'm still going to keep my shoulders down and I'm still going to do my best to keep the integrity of the pose. Arms wide to allow your hips to flow through the hands instead of um, getting stuck in the middle of the wrists. Also, if you have blocks, if you have yoga blocks, this is a great place to use them because that extra lift makes it easier to get those legs through. Okay, let's begin. Inhale. One. Oops. Two, two, uh, two, uh, too tight. Okay, start going over. Inhale. One. Two. Three, oh, four, five, moving to upward facing dog, making sure we use that protective grip, L, fingers out. We're doing yoga every single day. If you are not using the protective grip, about now you'll start to feel carpal tunnel creeping in, which is why I say this. So please use the protective grip, number one. And number two, since we do so much shoulder work, it's really important to make sure that your shoulders are always rooting towards your heart. Otherwise, you will dislocate them because we're doing so much shoulder work. So always pinning the shoulders. When in doubt, Get out of the pose and pin the shoulders to the ground rather than doing the pose and having the shoulders out of the sockets. Oops. Hope that makes sense. Let's do, we're going to do the modified version of upward to downward, the fifth of the five Tibetan rituals. Eyes at the elbow are pointing towards the front of the mat, which means the elbows are gonna kind of squeeze towards each other, creating that protective framework for the shoulders, for the wrists, for the elbows, for the entire front side body. Okay, on my knees, I'm going to inhale. One. Everybody else, you're going to be doing upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Two. Unless you're doing the beginner mode. Three. Four. Five. And now we bring it all together. And if you're not in a sleeping house, you can do that again with om. Um, I am in a sleeping house, so I don't want to wake me up. Okay, now let's do our yang, our first yang pose. And our first yang pose is going to be one that you guys know so, so well. We're going to do tree. We're going to celebrate being at the top of the mountain. Two feet side by side. Let's start with the left foot. So we're going to balance on the left foot. Our supporting side is the side that is the most important focus here. So we're going to very intentionally root through the ground, remembering that the earth is supporting us at the same time. 
there is a two directional flow of support. And as we're rooting, we're thinking of the spiral of energy spiraling around, 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 around. And that is what's going to give us that lifted feeling that's going to allow us to stand up nice and straight on that supporting leg as we're doing the pose. Since you guys already know tree, I'm gonna demonstrate the side, the sectional view of tree instead of the plan view. Okay, so let's start. And I'm gonna show you the supporting side because that's the side that matters. Two feet solidly on the ground, kickstand the right foot so that the bottom of the right foot is gonna kiss the left foot, the left foot in the middle of the foot and at above the left ankle bone. This is tree. I have arrived. I am home. We're grounding. We're spiraling our leg, our left leg's energy is spiraling into the ground. And as a spiral works, it spirals up and spirals down at the same time. And let's climb that foot up a little higher. Breathing. Hmm. Our foot is now below the knee on the shin. I have arrived. I am home. Thinking of that lifting feeling, I was starting to sink. Thinking of that lifting feeling. That lifting feeling means I have to push down into the ground. If I feel unsteady, I can always bend my knee. Bringing ourselves closer to the ground actually gives us more stability. Climbing the foot up and over, I'm going to use my right hand to support that climb so that I can gently rest my right foot to meet my left inner thigh. But my left inner thigh is pushing against my right foot. It is the tension between the two parts, the foot and the thigh, that creates the balance at this level. It's happening at a much smaller level on the calf muscle and the shin. But since the shin is a bone, it can't really push. But this pushing is definitely happening here. And lastly, I can put my right foot into my pocket, the hip flexor. Holding it with my hand or letting it balance if it so wants to stay. In Bikram, we would take a rag, a cotton rag, and put it in the hip flexor and that would hold the foot there because it would be so slippery. Hands in Samasidhi, growing your tree, keeping the hands in prayer, or taking them above your head. Growing your tree, expanding through the backs of the hand and through the fingertips, keeping that energy activated, not straight arms. Focus is forward. Focus is up through the hands, or focus is the within with the eyes closed. If your balance is there today, be where you are. Regardless of where you are, we're going to unpack the tree. We're going to deconstruct it just the way we came in. Grace coming in, grace coming out. Unpacking, bringing the hands down through prayer. Feeling that strong spiral, your left leg might be really like, hey, we can stop now. I'm good. <laughs> Grabbing the left foot, the right foot with the left hand, helping it to meet the inner thigh with the right foot. Bringing that right foot down to meet the shin. Bringing that right foot down for kickstand. And bringing the two feet together. Tadasana. Let's take the other side. We really want to focus on, and I have to keep reminding myself as well, focusing on that liftedness through this area of the body, through the hips and the back, the front and back of this top of the top of the leg. In order to get that liftedness, that lifted feeling, we've got to spiral through the ankle, spiral 
through, down and around, down and around. Okay, so pushing down very, very strongly, starting on two feet, Tadasana. And let's engage with tree. Okay, kickstand. This is the pose. I have arrived, I am home. Our balance comes from pushing against the ground, not from thinking about going up. So now we're going to climb that left foot just a little bit, but think of the more my foot climbs, the more strongly I'm going to think about spiraling that energy down into the ground on the right side body. At the shin, I've arrived. I'm home. Focusing on one point that is unmoving. If you were to zoom in, don't look at the screen, but if you were to, you'd see that my leg is moving a lot. It's moving back and forth. It's continually refinding balance. Balance is not a rest. It is an activity constantly in motion. Our whole world is balancing. Any solid is actually moving quite quickly or quite slowly if you compare it to a liquid or a gas. But it's moving, always moving. I forgot to cue it. <laughs> Bring your left foot up to your right inner thigh so that they can meet, so that you can have that lovely point of balance where the right inner thigh is pushing against the left foot, making it easier for stability in this pose. And lastly, if you so desire, if you deign to take this last piece, you're going to grab the left foot with the right hand and put it in the hip flexor, angling that left knee towards the ground, thinking about staying up and out of that hip so that you don't hurt yourself. And now you can keep the hand holding there. I've arrived. I am home. You can take the two hands to prayer. You can grow your tree. The two hands come up overhead, pushing through the backs of the hands first, then elongating through the fingertips. You can take a Jaya Mudra if you'd like. You can, your gaze is forward looking at an unmoving object. It's up through the fingers or it, the, it is within with the eyes closed. I'm feeling brave on this side. So I'm gonna let my gaze, I'm gonna challenge the pose just a little bit and let my gaze, gaze come through the fingers. Mm. I've arrived, I'm home. Mm. Okay, I'm going to bring my gaze down, back to neutral, bringing the hands to prayer overhead, shoulders down, bringing the hands through the center to my heart in prayer. And we're just going to pick you up wherever you stopped along the way for a nice balancing time. We're going to put left hand on the hip, right hand is going to grab the left foot. We're going to help the left foot to meet the inner thigh on the, to meet the right inner thigh. Hands come to either side now. I'm thinking about that spiral out of the hips. Climb that left foot down. Thinking of climbing it down creates a resistance that allows the left foot to smoothly make its way down, meeting at the shin, below the knee, never on the knee. And meeting at kickstand. And finally, two feet on the ground, mountain, I mean, excuse me, tree. And now we're going to reach up, 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 up through the two hands, fold forward with a flat back. <clears throat> Two.
two hands on the shin, come to flat back. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. And this time we're just going to walk right to downward facing dog. This is our second young pose. And this is gonna be my counter pose for tree because my calves did a lot of work. My calves and inner thighs, so really the entire back of my legs, they, it did, both backs, <laughs> did a lot of work. So I want to stretch them. Remember, in Downward Facing Dog, you can also put a bolster under your heels. Because if your heels are not fully on the ground yet, because when you have support, when your body can contact something, it can root into it, and that creates opportunity for more flexibility. That creates stretching opportunities. So always do your best to support yourself if you have the resources, and you do. If you have pillows, you can do it. Maybe you don't have yoga blocks, so you can't support yourself, like as I mentioned earlier, for the um, tabletop, for the second part of the tabletop pose, but you do have pillows, so most of the time you can support yourself. Breathing here. Eyes of the elbow want to face the front of the mat. They can't. Physically, they can't. It's about the twisting. It's not about twisting your arm and <laughs> dislocating your shoulders. It's about the twist. Ooh. Thinking really about the point, the top of this pose is your, is the moment where your lower back and your the top of your legs meet. So it's kind of like sticking your butt in the air, but not exactly because you're thinking about a nice straight back. Okay, let's now, for time's sake, uh, because I took a really long time with tree, we're only going to do two yin and two yang instead of two, uh, three yin and three yang. So now let's switch over to yin. And we're first going to begin with child's pose. We're going to do the yin child's pose. So we're just going to fold so you're going to fold the, for the, the head forward, and we're going to roll down through the spine. My seat is on my heels. And if your seat is not on your heels, you're welcome to use a pillow to get that point of contact for your seat, for your heels. We've rolled down through the spine, and now I'm going to just elongate my spine so that my third eye is cradled with the ground. I'm going to move my hands. This is the yang, the yin version. I'm going to bring my hands, my arms to either side of my legs, and I'm going to let my palms face the sky. Hmm. This is essentially a, a counter pose to downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, we were stretching and arching our back. And now in child's pose, we're supporting that part that was arching that top of the back. If you ever find yourself spinning out, afraid, worried, you can always bring your head under your heart. But if you can't do that, go to the bathroom, put a paper towel on the ground, come to child's pose and put your third eye on the ground. You might even feel a little sick from the effect of so quickly bringing stillness to your whole being but this is like pushing a button, pushing a relax button. Frankie says, relax. 
weeks. And our final of our yang slash yin today, rolling up through your spine while I speak. Our final is legs up the wall pose. Rolling up through the spine, the head arrives last. Legs up the wall pose, and I love it because it's like a twofer. Not only is it a yin pose, but it's also an inversion. And I promised an inversion. One of my plants, it um, sweats, drips water. Okay, walking our butt towards the wall so that it kisses the wall. And then letting our legs rest along the wall, we walk our body down. Remembering that as we move our body down, we'll move a little bit away from the wall. So just keep that focus on the root chakra kissing the wall. Oh my gosh, the ground is so cold. I cannot get used to that. Oof, I'm usually doing it in the middle of the day and the heat's been running and it's a lot. So excuse the reaction. Think about what you want today. Do you want to receive more today? If yes, let your palms face the sky to receive? Do you feel a, an influx of energy? I'm in the early days of my cycle, which means I've got a lot more energy. I need less sleep. I've naturally got more to give. So you would face your palms down. I'm in giving mode or both left side receives, right side gives. Take this opportunity to luxuriate in belly breaths. So let the belly rise and fall. Let the belly rise and fall. You don't really want to control the exhale. Let gravity do it. Rise and fall. Now let's roll out of legs up the wall and come to Shavasana. We started five minutes late, so the timing is going to look like five minutes late, but we are on time. If you're doing it live with me now, little yawn. My lower back is feeling vulnerable, so I'm going to bring my feet to flat and let my knees curl in towards each other. Leaning on each other.
Let everything you did today land Let's shift our weight to the right side of the mat, unless you are doing this night. And if you're doing this at night before you go to bed or before you turn in for the night and hunker down, then you'll want to go to the left. But if you're about to start your day, which we are, it is called the Sunrise Yoga Challenge for beginners, then you're going to flip to the right. Pushing against the ground with your left hand. Make your way to seated. And find some stillness here. Think about your commitment, your devotion, your question, your statement, the answer you might be struggling to embrace, the question you might be struggling to ask. What brought you to this, to commit to 30 days? The thing that's going to guide you through. You don't have to answer the question, just be with it. Make sure to write it down in your journal, reflect on it, and notice how things are changing in your life. Yoga has an holistic effect on our lives. It is not just what's happening on the mat. Mm. It's guaranteed to shake things up in the best way. Hands to heart. Let your eyes open. And I say to you that I wish you what I find to be the four most important things we can have. Joy, ease, space, and grace and beauty. Let Nam Namaste.